I might see 8,000 load. I'm just giving you, you know, example and just throwing these numbers to make this, just to illustrate the point. And then the guy next to me, you know, has the same origin and destination, but he might see loads for 3,000, 4,000. And there is a reason behind. We need to understand, and again, the anatomy and the physiology of this load board. And obviously, I'll, give you, I'll be giving you the ins and outs of like tips and tactics and strategies, how to use it. I will say, listen, here is an origin, right? Let's put Atlanta, Georgia, and it goes to Houston, Texas, which is destination. And I will say, listen, don't go this route go this route and you will be making you you know you know you'll make a lot of money if you're independent freight dispatcher for your carrier and if you're a carrier and you have if you have in-house dispatchers or you might be dispatching your own loads and you'll be like oh wow this is something amazing that i never you know thought about this or never experienced or something like that so in, in, a, in a couple of minutes you won't see me the only thing you will see I'll show you is this screen. So I will just disappear and you will see this screen. We'll be going over. Like, why don't we just go over right now? Okay. So the only thing I'm, I only thing I require from you guys, please do me a favor. Get engaged with me, right? So I'll be talking about a lot of things today and I just want you to ask questions so you can, you know, you can stop me and say, hey, come on, please stop and let's talk about this. This is very important. And let me ask you this question and help me here. Help me there. Guys, I'm here with you. Just just use this time. Like, get the most out of this live training by engaging and asking questions. So if you think, you know, this video uh, live training will help other people as well, please do share with other people. You know, let them know that this live, you know, training is happening. And... What I realize is that 80% of the viewers coming to this channel, they never subscribe. Wow. Like, please, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and like this video, share with other people. And this is, you know, why it's so important, you know, when, when we get subscribers, let's say when you share this, um, let's say a video, it's just a validation of what we do. It's just more excitement. It's just like, oh, there are a lot of people interested in this specific video, interested in this channel, and we'll be doing the more work for you guys for free to learn. So, and Ahmed, I will be coming back and, you know, taking all the questions, but I do see my the chat box is open. I, I see, you know, they're coming, keep them coming. And I'll be taking at the end of the training, I will just give you the like uh, ins and outs of it, like a, like everything you need. Then obviously you can ask uh, questions. And I do see that you need to get carriers. And this is one of the common questions independent freight dispatchers ask. And I will give you some tips and tactics at the end of this training. Awesome. Let them coming in. So guys, let me go here. And this is the dashboard. And two major, you know, changes happening. I'll be talking more about these changes. But one thing is that the DAT has changed the name. Now, uh, remember, guys, we had this DAT power in other world boards. Now, think about this. Now, the one name is just DAT1. So please remember, DAT1 is the platform like you need to have. So if you are planning to open your independent freight dispatching company or you're a carrier or maybe you're using a different load board and you wanted to switch, just give DAT a call and mention my name, say dispatch trucks, you can say Kamal, whatever, and you can get free stuff. So, well, they're changing a lot of things. And one of the changes um, is that they don't, I, I, I believe that they don't have the 30 day free trial anymore, but what will happen is that I think they have the discount for the first month or something like that. They change a couple of things, but please give them a call and see what they have for you. And if you mention my name and, and, or, or my company, they will give you the discount. So you logged in. And again, I'm not talking about how you would go ahead and set up your account. I'm not going to do that. Why? Because when you call in, meaning call a DAT, they will take all the information you have and then they will do some background check, um, you know, check your information, whatever, and then they will give you the access, right? So once all that done, what you will see is this dashboard. This is where all the magic will be happening, right? So this is where you will be making money. 
this is where the carriers will be moving their trucks. This is where the brokers will be posting trucks and the freight for you guys, for independent freight dispatchers and for um, carriers. And this is where dispatchers working for carriers will get access to these load boards, okay? So for those of you, and again, I'll be focusing on two audiences. The one segment of audience is new coming or beginner type of level of an independent freight dispatcher and carrier because there are a lot of new carriers also coming in and then obviously if you're a seasoned pro both these segments will benefit will get the benefit out of this training so for the beginners obviously this is the dashboard when you have let's say when you created an account with a dat this is what you will see on the left side and then this is a canvas let's you know let's say that this is a canvas okay on the left side what we have very basic i'll break it down in a very basic and then like you will understand right so the five years old would understand i will just break it down on the left side obviously you will see uh the logo and now what we have is a dashboard we have um a search trucks we have private loads by the way if you don't know what private loads or any of these just calm down calm down i'll be talking about these you will get like you will have all the information you need and you will like know all of these like don't worry okay so i'll just i'll just go there search trucks private loads search loads this is where 90 percent of the time i'll be focusing this is this is search loads right and then company search my shipments post a shipment, multiple shipments, new tracking requests, my loads, private network, my trucks, life support, and tools. One thing that I want to point out is that since I have, if you, if you can pay attention to this, I have the test version of this load board. What it means is that I might, you, you might see something like off here, like, hey, come on, I don't have this, my shipments or uh, my tracking requests or anything like that. You might not see it. The only reason is that DAT gave me the full access so that I can show you, you know, how this works, what you have inside. If you're a broker, this is what you get, in, or if you're a carrier, this is what you get, or, or a carrier slash dispatcher, okay? So if you don't, if you don't see any of these, for one of these, just calm down, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll just go there. That means I have the access broker slash carrier version of the load board. You might have a carrier version of a load board, okay? So dashboard, on a dashboard, very important to see. And again, you, you can pay attention to this. This is get started, meaning basically a um, couple of videos will help you, you know, get the ball rolling. But... I'll, I, I really want you to like pay attention to post the shipment, search trucks, add a truck, and search loads. And again, as I said, 90% of the time I will be focusing on this, but these are very important. I will give you the information and talk about like what are these, each of these means, and like functionality behind this. And again, remember like anatomy and the physiology. So on the right side, you will see this national loads count. You can you know switch by you know national. Uh, tracks count you can do that or you can just say hey i want to see the national loads count and again more info later on this and this is very important and why is that one thing is a common sense if, if this is let's say not important then why dat puts on the dashboard this is where basically this is where all the all the war or or the game starts and on the right side it gives you the the information you need not many people may be paying attention to this, but I really want you to pay attention, okay? This is very, very important. Now, these two tabs, post a shipment and search a truck or search trucks, these are, these are for brokers, okay? So just keep in mind that these are for brokers. You don't have to know like, why is that? Why not for KDS? You, you don't have to go, you know, like hard on this. Just keep it simple, this and this for carrier, I mean for brokers. Add a truck and search loads, these two for carriers slash freight dispatchers, okay? These two 
for those people. Now, very important, post the shipment, this is where you as a broker, if you're a broker, you know, like wanted to become a broker, whatever, and this is where you post a shipment. Okay, I'm not going into this. I might do another video, like a full detail, like going um, into details showing you guys, but we'll be focusing, as I said, that the plan is to focus on search lows primarily for today's video. Okay, so for that reason, I will just, you know, talk about what are these, like an anatomy, and then for the physiology, we'll come back. Physiology meaning how it works. So the search trucks, if you are a broker or you want to become a broker, this is where you will be searching for trucks. Let's say you have a lot of shipments from Atlanta going out of Atlanta, Georgia to Texas. You will search trucks that were posted by carriers in or by the freight dispatchers. Okay, so you will search them here. Now, at a truck, this is where the carrier and the freight dispatcher come in. Very, very important that you post a truck. And again, I'm not going into detail. So if you click on this, you will see just like basically uh, putting the information about your truck so that it was visible to the low, I mean, to the broker when the broker, you know, tries to assign a load. Now, question, <clears throat> why posting truck is important? Well, think about it. broker has a lot of loads and I have a lot of friends that they're in, you know, like, like they're brokers and I have a lot of good friends um, that I work with, they're brokers and, and know that what they have in common before they post a load, let's say like pushing to like general public, let's say, right to all the carriers, what they do is that they search for carriers. They will see how many trucks out there. And then they will be calling brokers. I mean, calling calling carriers, these brokers say, hey, you have, let's say you, you posted your trucks in Atlanta, Georgia. You have about four trucks, two trucks, 10 trucks. It doesn't matter. But I have a lot of loads. It happened a lot when broker calls in and says, hey, listen, Kamal, I have um, loads coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, but I do see your trucks are in Atlanta, Georgia. So I have about like 15 loads for this week or or whatever, but can you cover them? And he didn't even post it yet. Think about, it. this is very, very important. So how you do that, you just add a truck, right? If you're serving your carriers, this is where you will click and add the truck information so that it's visible for brokers. Why? When broker has loads or brokers have loads available and they will be calling you. Think about it. what a good feeling when broker calls you and ask for 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 availability of your trucks. Think about it. like think about it. This is very important because when broker calls you, think about now you have the power to negotiate. Think about it. I'll give you an example. Let's say if I post a truck and broker calls me and then I didn't post a you know truck and I search for a load that was posted by by a broker. Think about these two scenarios, like exactly the same load coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, goes to Houston, Texas. One, scenario A is when I posted a truck in Atlanta and I showed to this broker that this truck goes from Atlanta to Houston, Texas, and this calls, this broker calls me and said, hey, Kamal, I have a load. Can you take it? Think about it. Now, he asking me to take it, that means I have the power to negotiate. Let's say this load goes for $3,000 and I might say, hey man, like I need $3,500 for this load. Now that's the scenario A. Let's say scenario B, right? Or the option B, this is where I didn't post the truck, but broker posted a load, exactly the same load, go to, go, goes out of Atlanta, Georgia, goes to Houston, Texas. And I called and I say, hey, Mike, I see that you posted this load from Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, Texas. Uh, I want to take it, for example, right? That's the basic language. And he says, yeah, this load is 3,000. Well, when I say like 3,500, well, 90% of the time, the probability of him saying no is high. Why? Because the power of negotiation, like now the power is on my site, right? So... I can negotiate because you broker called me and asking me to cover this load. Think about it, right? It's, it's a basic psychology. Now, moving on, a lot of things to cover. Now, what I do, I post trucks, okay? So this is like the one, 
90% of the time, dispatcher will log in and start searching loads. Like me, 90% of the time, and the people that I taught how to become independent freight dispatchers, most of them, when, once they log in, first thing I know by name, my students, and then they will go there and they will click add truck first. Good deal? You guys have questions? Please let me know. Now, as I said, we'll be focusing on searching loads. I'll come back to this, but I really want to cover because as I promised, I said I will come back and we'll talk about this national loads count. Before we go into this, um, into national loads count and why it's important um, and how you can use this to leverage and be efficient in your dispatching business or you, you like being a, like a carrier. Think about DAT Mobile. Now you have a mobile version of this entire load board. Okay. So think about this national load count. Think about all the um, states we have in loads in. It, it, you know, it's straightforward, but then in a very important aspect of it, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this. So you can have van in a flatbed, but if you wanted to move, let's say this and add, let's say um, a flatbed, add a van, you can do whatever you want with this. Um, if you want to add, let's say reefer, you can do that. You can um, have, let's say a van as well. But I'm in the flatbed market and I, you know, I teach people, um, you know, specifically in the flatbed market because I know ins and outs of this flatbed market. So now let's say flatbed market. And for those of you who don't know, right? So the, like you are, don't know anything about freight dispatching. You don't know anything about trucking. Please bear with me. Just keep watching. If you want to do just Google search, you can just go there and then you can Google search like what, what's the flatbed, the equipment type for truck, and you will see. That's the basically a trailer type, okay? Now, flatbed, think about now the national loads count. I want to quiz you, right? So before I quiz you, obviously, I will teach you. Now, think about these are the states, okay? So let me refresh once again. These are the states. And these are, I don't know for some reason, so you don't you don't see, but now you see the loads in and loads out. Loads in, pick any state. Let's pick a Georgia. They are 168 loads coming in to where? Coming into the Georgia, right? The load in, meaning loads coming into the Georgia. Okay, how many loads living out of the Georgia, right? Loads out, going out of a Georgia, 189 loads, okay? Now, I'll give you an example of Tennessee. Right now, how many loads in? Just engage with me. Type, let me know, okay? It's 162 loads that are coming into the Tennessee. 44 loads coming out of a Tennessee. One quick question. This is where the quiz, okay? So I'll quiz you on this. Think about, you have trucks available, any state, okay? Now, let me let me pick a state for you so that, you know, it will be easy for you. Since we are on the flatbed, let's pick Tennessee, I mean, Texas, okay? And then we'll pick, um, let me see, so that will be Utah, I think, will be one. Let me see. Um, yeah, let's let's do Texas and yes, Texas and Alabama. That will be that will be awesome. Yes, let's do Texas and Alabama. Okay. Now, if you have a truck, let's say in in Texas, let's say you have it in Texas, let's say in Houston, Texas. Okay. Would you take your trucks to Alabama? Yes or no? Let me know. Your trucks in Houston, Texas, you delivered. Would you take your trucks, if you're an independent freight dispatcher, will you be searching loads um, in Alabama? Or if you're a carrier, same thing, will you go from Houston, Texas to Birmingham, Alabama, let's say? Think about it. This will guide you. Why is that? Think about going out of a Texas is hard for you. There's a lot of competition because why? Going 
loads that going out is 78. Think about it. Alabama is 381 loads coming out of Alabama, right? Will you go to Kentucky from Texas? So if you have a load, but you can go there, but then think about going out of a Texas, I mean, uh, Kentucky is 71 loads. Think about it. it's a, it's a Kentucky. It, it, it doesn't mean the specific market like Louisville, Kentucky, or something like that, right? It's it's just like a whole state. Now use this to see, like, if you deliver your carrier delivered the, the load in in Houston, Texas, and he wants to go west, east, whatever, northeast, southeast, you just take a quick look and see where your trucks are going. Will be easy to go out. Right, and so you just look at the loads that are going out. Oh, there are a lot of loads coming out of um, Alabama, so my trucks won't stop there, right, for a day or two, because there are a lot of loads coming out. So, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and vice versa. Think about like from Alabama, how many loads that are going into, for example, um, think about in in Texas. You will see that a lot of loads going into um, the Texas. Think about it. It's not a Houston, Texas. It's, it's not a Dallas, Texas. Think about it. It's not an Austin, Texas. It's a Texas. It, like a whole state is 465 loads. Think about We're thinking in terms of loads, but what about in terms of a trucks? There will be a lot of trucks in Texas, meaning there will be a lot of competition. Now is in broker's favor. Remember this negotiation you know, power? That now the power is on the broker side. Why? Because you have a lot of carriers out there. If you don't want to pick up this load, I can obviously ask another carrier so that they can pick up the load. Okay, cool. Now, national load count. Now, moving into something very amazing. This is 90% of the uh, independent freight dispatcher jobs will be happening. The miracle is happening here. Carriers live here. Independent freight dis dispatchers lives here. It's a search load. So once you click on a search load, what you will see is this, <clears throat> if you didn't put anything inside, like origin, like I did, a destination. Very simple. Guys, if you are new to this, meaning independent freight dispatching, or if you're new to this platform, which is DAT1, you'll be like, what? What the hell is this? Like, this is very confusing. Man, sometimes software can be very, very, um, like, it, it's scary, right? I don't know how to use it. I don't know. Like, I have a lot of navigations here, a lot of things to input. Calm down. <laughs> this, you know, th this is very important. Just calm down. I'll just break it down. You will obviously learn something. And, and again, when I will be putting these, and I'll be, remember, I promise I'll be sharing my tactics as well. And this is where the Season Pro, you know, benefit comes in, meaning... You're like, hey, Kamal, I know this, but you said that you will be sharing like ins and outs and tips, tips and tactics for pro dispatchers as well. But I know this, but again, this is what I'll be sharing with you, what I will do, right? So now newcomers, like beginners, and obviously um, pro dispatchers will benefit as well. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. From top to bottom, okay, focus on these first. Now, we have, what is it? We have origin. We have a destination. Origins, like, think about origin is very straightforward. This is where you will pick up a load. And destination, this is where you will deliver the load. Think about it, okay? Now, we cover this. If you have questions, please let me know. But again, I will be, I'll come back and then share some tips and tactics. How to do better search, okay? This is Atlanta to Los Angeles, California. Okay, this is how you do search. Now, second, what we have is DHO stands for Deadhead Origin. And we also have Deadhead Destination. Okay, so since it's destination is Deadhead Destination. Now, what is it, Kamal? Think about, make it simple. Let me give you an example. DH stands for Deadhead. Deadhead, you can also... You can think of empty miles, meaning nothing on the truck moving from Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, Texas, for example. Um, 
or deadhead destination is well deadhead is exactly the same thing like it's an empty miles but on the destination think about deadhead um origin let's say you look for a load okay look for a load from atlanta georgia to los angeles but again maybe there's no load in los angeles california um Maybe it's in um, Corona, California, right? Think about deadhead origin. I will give you a more specific example. Let's say Atlanta, Georgia to Charlotte, North Carolina. The distance between Atlanta, Georgia and Charlotte, North Carolina is about 250 miles. Now, you have a load in Charlotte, North Carolina, but your trucks are in the um in atlanta georgia it's 250 mile away right but this load pays you good money and this load goes from charlotte north carolina to houston texas you wanted to go to houston texas but you never thought about going to charlotte north carolina but think about it. it's worth it why because the broker posted for very good rate meaning the money okay now you're thinking well i think i can take my carrier or my truck go empty from atlanta georgia to i mean from atlanta georgia to charlotte north carolina 250 mile empty well think about why dat put this information here is because this is very very important 250 mile you will be driving empty that means it's an expense expense to your carrier right or if you're a carrier it's expense why because your driver will be driving and you're paying per mile rate 60 cents per mile 65 cents per mile it just multiplies 60 cents per mile for 250 mile you you, you know deadhead think about if you multiply um let's say it's like 60 cents per mile, meaning 250 miles. What is it? It's about like $150 or about $200 you're paying extra to your driver. Just driving empty. But think about what about cost per mile? You have a truck payment. You have a trailer payment. You have a gas. Think about it. It adds up. 150 mile here, 250 mile over there, uh, 50 mile here, 6 mile there. And at the end of the year... Think about it. this is where the optimization comes in, guys. This is very, very important. Not many freight dispatchers or carriers paying attention to this. By saving this, you will save a lot of money. Okay. Now, what about this? We already covered this is an empty mile to go from origin, meaning when you search Atlanta, if there's an there's a load in Atlanta, deadhead maybe it's about like it depends on where you specifically are or let, let's say if you're in downtown atlanta and then it goes about like 10 miles away the load is 10 miles away you know, like two blocks away whatever but you still there like a couple miles right in the simply because loads are not being posted where do you locate it right maybe if you are in a truck stop in atlanta well you won't see the load posted in specific um let's say location it's like it will just put atlanta that's it but then it will count the deadhead from one city to another city that's where the deadhead you know starts counting right this bit well this is how dat at least or this software at least counts the deadhead this is deadhead origin okay now we covered it uh like i think it's 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 clear now now what about deadhead destination if you put los angeles Basically, it says like, hey, you can give me loads in, in, in Los Angeles. As you can see, deadhead. See this? Deadhead, Los Angeles, zero. But at the same time, you see it says like 150. And you're basically telling the DAT or the, this DAT1 software or the load board, you're saying, hey, I'm willing to go extra, like 150 miles right san marcos think about um huntington beach um uh, corona california think about riverside Cal california think about you, you you're willing to go extra miles and there is a key to this 
Think about how many loads we have. Let's say we have um, about. Um, by the way, guys, I'll, I'll come come uh, come to this, and I'll um, talk about this. It's very very important. This basically says, hey, we have a similar load. So it's not in Atlanta, Georgia, but it's in Albany, Georgia. Maybe it's in Macon, Georgia. Think about right. Maybe it's like. 100 miles away, there's, there's another city you can go there. But this, these are the similar loads. So you can toggle off or toggle on. Okay? Now, let's say we have um, three results right now. As you can see, we have three results. One, two, three. And this is from Atlanta, Georgia to Los Angeles, California. And the dead head is 150. So think about what if, if I put 350-mile radius and I put 250-mile radius, okay? Yes, I know that I said that it's an extra expense, but think about it, guys. This is where you will see how many loads out there, right? It's basically for researching purposes. And you can talk to your carriers as well and say, you can see that, hey, man, right now, instead of three, now I have 18, right? So now think about from Atlanta, Georgia, you can go to uh, Pendergrass, Georgia, okay? And again, Albany, Georgia, they did a lot of loads, by the way, from Albany, Georgia, Right, so you can go there and take that load and go here. It's basically you can also put um, from 250. You can put 350 just to see how many loads out there. See, now it's 19. And again, guys, this is very very important. Searching by, and this is how I would do. Remember the pro um, dispatchers out there, and you want to know how I would use. I would use by zones. Zones is basically, it's a couple of states. I'll be searching loads not in one state, in this case, in one specific city in Georgia, one specific city in California. But what I would do, this is how I do it, I have done it, is basically including a couple of states or think about zones. We'll be talking about zones in a minute and we'll be going into details. Think about um, Georgia. Think about Southeast area. Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. Searching by zones to just specific um, state and city. You can do that, meaning... Many states to one city, one state. Keep that in mind. Please take notes. This is very, very important. Search multiple states for the origin that goes to a specific city because it's a market, specific market. Because Los Angeles is a market and it's a huge market. Houston, Texas is a huge market, right? goes to a specific city, specific state. Do vice versa. One specific state, one specific city goes to multiple states. That's another way of searching loads or doing research or building the lanes you want. That's the second option. Third option is going from multiple states to multiple states. Think about from West Coast to East Coast or from East Coast to West Coast. Hope that makes sense. Okay? Very, very important. I would, you know, put for vans, I will do for flatbeds, I will do for uh, reefer and, and then see what are, are these loads are going like and who would be paying the most. Now, we, we are... Here, right? Deadhead destination. Now, move on to equipment type. This is where you will include, like, your equipment type. Meaning, if you're a flatbed, if you're a reefer, and this is a temperature control, meaning um, you can move produce, ice cream, something like that, right? And in a flatbed, think about moving plywood and stuff like that, construction materials, um, heavy-duty equipment, something like that. Vans, and obviously, 90% <clears throat> of the time uh, on the road, you will, you will see that these are the vans. Right? These are closed trailers. Now, you can pick all three, or you can just pick one. Do whatever you want. But this is an equipment type, okay? Moving on to load type, what you're 
telling to software is saying that, hey, or the load board saying, hey, I'm moving from Atlanta, Georgia to Los Angeles, California. This is the deadhead and this is the equipment. And I want you to show me full load or partial load. Guys, a lot of dispatchers, a lot of carriers using either one of these, full load or partial load. But in any case, just put full and partial load. I'll come back to this and I'll explain a little bit more, but I will just catch a little bit or touch a little bit on this. I had experienced when brokers make a lot of mistakes. Full load posted like as a partial load, partial loads being posted as a full load, right? And just put these so that you will be on a safe side. Now, length of a tra trailer 99% of the time is a 53, unless if it's a box truck or something like that. And again, if you guys dispatching box truck, let me know. I'll show you some ticks and you know tips and tactics. But if you are um, in a carrier, you have your box truck, let me know as well. Now, weight limit, I usually limit 45,000 because I don't want to see 48,000. See this? Like I see 30,000, 35,000, 40,000. I don't want to see 48,000 or 50,000 or something like that. I will just put, hey, low board. I don't want to see more than 45,000. Now, the date um, is, is basically from to, right? You can, you know, do here. It's very straightforward and click search, right? So now moving on to these load requirements, we have search back. We have a company. We have private loads. Private loads, very, very important, guys. And I really wanted to talk about this. Maybe I'll do another video going into details, but we'll, I'll talk about this here as well. And then book or bid load, okay? Now, let's click on load requirement. Load requirement is, this is for broker. Think about like, hey, um, and carrier also can search a load saying, hey, I want to search for a loads that, you know, brokers tracking the shipment. Or I want to say, hey, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be tracked by a broker. So I don't need loads that require tracking. So what is tracking is basically broker says, hey, man, I want to see what your trucks are or is. Uh, I want to track my shipment because blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. It's important, right? So broker can't say that. Um, that's what it is. You can just put both or you can say tracking not required. I, I'm looking those loads you can say that's it click done and move on search back is basically saying hey go back 24 hours and show me what are those loads because some people um i mean some loads will be available for six hours or whatever and then you can still call them and negotiate them and whatever right it's 24 hours is basically this is a typical hour that freight dispatchers and carriers put um me too same it's like 24 hours now company very important you can say exclude uh, TQL, exclude X, Y, and Z company. You can do that by just typing here, and then you won't see. For example, XPO Logistics, you can put exclude company, and you can type, and then you won't see XPO Logistics loads. Okay? Preferred in block list, we'll be talking about this. You can also manage up here. We'll be, I'll be showing you how to um, make it preferred and make it block so you can see them later. This is very important. Um, you can say show all non-blocked companies, meaning I never blocked them. I want to work with them. You can do that. Now, show only preferred companies. This is where like you mark them as preferred companies. I want to work um, with, let's say, Landstar Ranger Inc. I want to work with them. You put it as, as um, preferred companies and you can always click you want to search for those companies, you can click over here. Now, show only blocked companies. You want to see how many companies you blocked. You can just click here and then click done, and then you will see how many companies you blocked. And obviously, if you want to manage them, unblock them, or unpreferred them, whatever you want to do is here, manage preferred or block list. Cool. Now, moving on to private loads. And again, I really like the idea, this exclamation mark, this is where... Um, you can see, you can just go, if you just forget about it, saying like, what are these private loads? You can just go, you can just go there and, and read. Private loads are loads offered to selected carriers. I did a um, live training with, with Michael. He's one of the um, uh, old employees 
old meaning like experienced employees, like working for a long time. That one, I don't mean his age. I mean the work experience that he has with uh, with the DAT. I did a live training with him, and and he talked about more specific. I will include this video um, somewhere here. You will just click and then watch later. But the private loans are offered by selected carriers from brokers that I have that I have added you as a carrier to their private carrier list okay i will talk about this um, later more in details but just keeping in mind that this is where the broker selects specific carriers and says to load board hey i post these loads let them available to selected carriers this is what it means okay now bid or book or bid there will be loads that you need to bid on a load. Bidding is basically broker will say, hey, um, for how much you can take this load? Um, you can say for 2000 then carrier B can say I can take for $1,800. Um, carrier C can say I can take for $1,500. The, who gives the lowest? Broker will pick that carrier and assign that load to that carrier. And, and it makes, re, you know, there's a big reason for that because brokers want to make more money out of it. It's just basically creating... Um, this competition amongst, uh, among the carriers, just let them fight for the price. And I will just pick the lowest um, asking price and I will just assign this low to that carrier. Okay. And you can see that, no, I don't want to just, I don't want to sit here and bid for, on lows. I want to just see bookable lows. Bookable lows is just like call the broker or email the broker and just get the load. Okay. You can do that as well. Now, these are basically showing you how many loads, how many similar loads. Remember, toggle off and toggle on. This is what it is. Now, moving on to these, um, I don't know. Should I call them links? Should I call them tabs? Whatever you want to call. But these are um, is these are the like. Let's say these are the tabs. So think about age. Age. It's like for how long this loads load. load you know, post it. It says for 14 hours. So this load has been sitting for 14 hours. Why I'm, I'm seeing this like hours? Well, one reason, I think it's the main reason, is like why this load sitting for 14 hours? There are hundreds of thousands of carriers bidding on loads and this load sitting on for hours, right? For 14 hours now. That means something is wrong. Okay, or just you know, call them and ask them like, why is that? Like, okay, maybe there's like specific requirements for this load. I will just click on a minute in on a load and I'll show you ins and outs of it. Now you will see that this load was posted 43 minutes ago, but again, don't have the price, the rate. Okay, rate meaning price, and this is the two dollars and twenty seven. It's it's basically per mile, right? How many miles we're driving? Think about 2,204 is basically from this to this location. And it divides this number, okay, by this number. And it gives you this. So when you click, and you will see all the information you need. We will come back to this. Moving on to the rate. Rate is obviously it's here for you. You can toggle them. See um, the most paying to lowest pain you can you can toggle on toggle off um, and then age you can do the same thing the latest was posted 44 minutes ago and then the oldest was posted and again um uh, i think it was like 40 14 hours or something like that okay moving to trip meaning the you know origin and destination um it's from albany to los angeles is 2255 uh, 55 miles and this is you know the, the, the shows the trip origin is the city you're going out we talked about deadhead um, origin we talked about destination destination um, deadhead origin for destination we uh, now on the pickup pickup meaning the date equipment type then flatbed step flatbed you can also see d d stands for step deck and again for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about please google it it was just, you know, move, moving fast. We'll come back to this. <clears throat> and again, company, who posted this? XPO Logistics posted this load. And I really want you to pay attention to this. This column is very, very important. 
95 CS stands for credit score. Think about that way. 95 is closest to 100 is good. Why is that? Because XP Logistics will pay in 18 days. DTP stands for day to pay. It takes them 18 days to pay. But again, if you're using factoring company, you will get paid, let's say, immediately or next day or within hours. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, as far as factoring company goes, it's just basically middleman company coming into play between a carrier and a broker. Carriers, I mean, factoring company says, you don't have to wait 18 days, factoring company says to carrier. Says, hey, carrier, I will give you the money today, okay? And I will wait 18 days so the broker will pay me, but I need certain percentage. Think about 1% or 2%, whatever. It depends on, on the factoring company. Now, let's click on C because we'll have more information about the load. Now, we'll see that this load goes from Albany, Georgia to Los Angeles, California. And this is the total miles up here, right? So this load for January 17. You can also see the, the route. View route, you can see. Let me uh, put, and you can see that this is what it is. It basically shows you how many miles will be, you know, you, you will drive, um, total trip time, anything, right? So you, like anything you want, you can, you can, you know, th th think about this um, as far as like, think about dispatchers, uh, basically visually seeing, right? This is very important information for you guys. Moving back, coming to this page here, we will have this, as I said, factoring company. It says load resources factor with OTR capital solutions that means this is the factoring company will work with you and say hey if you book this load we will factor it for you that means we'll pay you but we'll get certain percentage but then we'll wait remember the 18 how many days 18 hours to pay right so this company will wait 18 days but this will pay this company will pay like today or or tomorrow within a couple of hours or something like that all the information you need right the contact, you can contact them. The contract rate, you can see. Um, the contract rate is the spot market rate. We'll dive into this you know, more in details. <clears throat> I want to talk about this. Remember I said how to mark the, the load. So very important on, I can't remember if we had this on an old load board. This is where you can save this load. You can mark this as booked. You can also mark this as you called already. And it will show that, hey, you called already. So you, you don't want to you know, call them again. A lot of brokers, um, like back in the days, will call you know, one broker you know, multiple times and will say, oh, man, you called me uh, like three times already. So as I said, this load is covered or something like that. Okay? So very, very important. Now you can also see the 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 the, the company MC. You can uh, if you have software that you can go and check on their MC number. But I um, used a factoring company called OTR Solution. They're a great company to work with, and you can search them. You can call them quickly, and then you can use tools. Now they have you know a lot of tools that you can use quickly check um, if this you know broker you know it's 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 valid, and you can work with them or not. Now. Very, very, very important <clears throat> to remember one thing, the credit score. You don't want to mess up. If the people don't pay you, 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 don't, you don't need that. Now, we covered basically 80% of the load, meaning search, search loads. But I want to touch on these um, very important that this lane that we put Atlanta, Georgia to Los Angeles, California, the lane rate, think about an average is 3,000, you know, 3,100. Think about that way. And this is the typical rate per mile. But remember, this is a for, um, let's remove this and let's put just, I think in refresh, and then we'll see just for the flatbed. 
I want to talk about the try hall. Many people know this try hall, and I will show you what, what it means. The try hall, this is very important. This is how I will use it. And this is where the information, that my information comes in, um, meaning my experience will come in. This is very, very important. Um, think about you have a load from Atlanta to Houston, right? So this is, uh, let's say, Houston, Texas. If we just zoom in. You will see that this is a Houston, Texas. I have a load from Atlanta goes to Houston, Texas, right? And what most dispatchers will do, they will go out from Houston back to Atlanta, Georgia. They'll find a load from Atlanta goes to Houston, and they're like, oh, I want to go back. Listen, if you just take a load from Atlanta, come to Houston, and go back, you're not going to make that much money. If you're a carrier, you're not going to you know, make that much money. If you're a kid, I mean, dispatcher working with, with, with a carrier, carrier will be disappointed because, you know, carrier want to make money. So if the carrier makes money, you as an independent freight dispatcher make money, right? Okay. So here is the tactic was shared by my friend, and you can apply this principle to any city you want, and you can build your own tri hall, right? But before... You know, talking about this, let's come back to this tab over here. Let me see if I have. Okay, let's go to um, try hall. Once we clicked on try hall, you can see that from Atlanta market goes to Los Angeles market, and this is the total miles, and this is how much it pays, and this is how much you're making. Okay, now the try hall says you can go from Atlanta, Georgia. Go to Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Go there from Atlanta to here. Then from here, pick up a load and go to Los Angeles market. And you will make extra $2,265. Okay? Once again, pick a load from Atlanta that goes to Salt Lake City, Utah. Deliver that load over here. Pick that you know load from here. And then go to Los Angeles and you will make more money. That's the idea behind this, okay? Now, I showed you this. Let me come back. This. I used to use this route a lot, this try hall. So I built it, and I sh I'm sharing this with the world because I don't have trucks anymore. And this is very important, guys, and I will show you why. I used to pick loads from Atlanta that goes to Houston, Texas. And from Houston, Texas, I don't book loads coming back to Atlanta. I don't. What I do, I pick loads from Houston that goes to Dallas or Oklahoma City. Okay? From Houston to Dallas or from Houston to Oklahoma or from Houston to Dallas. Drop it, pick up another load, goes to Oklahoma City. Now, you might be asking questions like, man, I thought long haul will make the money. Well, that's not true. The short distance will give you the rate per mile you're looking for. Yes, a lot of people struggling right now, seeing that loads coming out of, let's say, Atlanta, Georgia to Los Angeles, California. Well, what is it? Right? I don't want to take that. It's just like 2,500 miles and it pays 3,000. No, no way. Well, because you're not using tri -hall. You're not leveraging tri -hall. Well, Kamal, I don't, I don't go from Atlanta to Houston. Well, use this principle and apply to any states you want, any city you want. Think about it. Now, what I did, I pick loads from Atlanta, Georgia, go to Houston. Then driver will drop it. Then I will see he, he's, he's coming. And I already have a load that goes out of a Houston, Texas to Dallas, Texas. Think about it. from Houston to Dallas is 250 mile radius. And it pays about 1,000 or 800 or 750 or 1,000 to 1,100. Any load can, you know, pop up. And think about it. from Atlanta to Houston, I was picking loads for 4,000. Think about the distance from Atlanta to Houston. Divide by the, let's say, 3,500 or 4,000, you will have the rate per mile. And then divide the load that pays from Houston to Texas, I mean, from Houston to Dallas, 250-mile radius, and pays 800, 900, or 1,000, and divide that 2.5. What do you have? Just like 
grab a calculator or take out your phone and just divide this $1,000 load divided by, um, let's say, $250. I mean, 250 miles from Houston to Texas. That's $4 per mile. If you say this to somebody, it will like, oh, man, like, what are you talking about? I barely do $2 per mile, mile, and then you're talking about $4? Are you crazy or what? No, because of the tactic, okay? That's $4. Now, what else? Do you think that I pick a load and go back to Atlanta? In some cases, yes, but most of the time, I'll pick a load and come back to Houston. Think about it. another $4 per mile, right? Or it's okay to have 3.5 right? Because of the short distance, okay? Now, you think that I will go back? No. I'll pick a load and go to Oklahoma City. Think about, it. like, are you following me? Like, like, just draw on a piece of paper what I'm doing and what I did to make the money and make my owner operators or carriers happy. This is how you make money, right? So this is the trial principle that is basically DAT says that, hey, listen, leverage this. This is very important. Okay. Now, again, from Atlanta to Houston, okay, from Houston to Dallas, from Dallas to Houston, from Houston to Oklahoma City, then go to Atlanta or come back to Houston, take a load, go back to Atlanta. Think about how much money you're making. And now the best part. From Atlanta to Houston, take this rate per mile, right? Let's say it was $2 even, okay? Now, from Houston to Dallas, obviously, you would get higher rate per mile because of the lower the distance, right? Let's say it was a $4, okay? Now, you take another load is 3.5 loads going to Houston, right? So, another from Houston to Oklahoma, let's say it's $3, per mile because of the short distance. And then from Oklahoma to coming back to Atlanta, let's say 1.5 rate per mile. Now, I'm doing the calculation right now for you, right? So there's a 6 plus 3.5 plus 3 plus 1.5, right? And divide this by 5. So now we have average 3.6 rate per mile. See that? Like, this is how you will boost your rate per mile. Okay? I hope you guys are taking notes. Okay. Now, market conditions, I have opened this. So, market condition meaning this. We'll talk about later the market conditions, but, I mean, the lane makers. I'll talk about the market conditions, and then we'll come back and do more on lane makers. Now, let me go here and think about, the, like, what do you see? <laughs> First of all, a lot of people, when I, when I do training, people, like, get crazy when, when see this. Like, well, what is it? <laughs> like, like, this is a tool that you need to use in order to move your trucks efficiently and make money by dispatching or looking for loads or being a carrier, okay? Now, market condition, and as name implies, is basically gives you the condition of the market. Market could be state. Market could be um, the city within, within, within the uh, state, right? It's basically how many loads out there. Uh, is it the bad market? Should I go? Should I not go, right? This tool will help you. And again, there's some downsides, and I will show you the downsides. Well, we'll talk about the downsides as well, okay? Now, I put flatbed, and what you see here is inbound, and you see outbound. You can toggle, right? Inbound, outbound. Sometimes you need to give a little bit of a time so that it will refresh, and sometimes it's, you know there's a glitch, but, and again, maybe because of my internet or something like that. But... And this is the time frame prior to 30 days. I do a lot of 30, day, um, 30 days prior to see the lows were posted, like studying the market. Not many people maybe do this, but I do, right? 
So prior eight days, what happened in the last week or the last eight days? Prior business day, meaning yesterday, what happened yesterday? Meaning on Tuesday, what happened? Well, I want to see this. Or you can toggle also current date, like today, what's happening, right? So you can search by country because there's a Canada, there's a Mexico, but this is the United States. Um, and then you just go region. You can, you know, do market condition to see market condition by regions. You can do market conditions by state, like Georgia, like Texas, um, like any state, right? So this is by state now. And then you can go and do extended market and you can do just the market. Let me come back and put the market. And you can also do the three digit zip. And you can also search by zip code. This is very, very important. Now I want to see this is this is a flatbed and this is a flatbed. This is an inbound. Inbound, meaning how many loads coming into the states, and outbound, how many loads goes out of the uh, the state or city. Now, Houston, Texas, and Atlanta, Georgia, that was my market, or the Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, or Houston, Texas to Atlanta, Georgia. I see that this is very important. Pay attention to this, specifically to this. L slash T ratio, 6.8, means load to truck ratio. Loads, 218 loads, and then there are trucks, 32 trucks. What that means is that, think about, there's 218 loads out there, but we have a 32 trucks, you know, in, you know, going into, let's say, in Texas. Now, here is the downside. This 32 load trucks, remember at the beginning of the training when I said posting trucks. So, well, if you're not posting trucks, it will influence this. Because not many people posting trucks. That's one of the downsides, okay? And then DAT or this software or the load board doesn't have any power to dictate so that you should or you must post your trucks. So it, it, this number becomes accurate. So this number is not accurate. Why? Because 32 people posted their trucks and then they will see their trucks. But 132 trucks weren't posted, right? So because of that, you need to be careful seeing that, okay, so if it's 32 trucks, there might be more than 32. Maybe it's about 60 trucks or something like that. It's just a, like a guesswork to me, at least, okay? Now, in Atlanta, I'm just saying, okay, my trucks are going to Atlanta, Georgia, um, and I will just do exactly the same, same thing. Like how many loads coming out of this 189? and 46 trucks in the, the market, specifically in Atlanta, Georgia. And obviously you can do prior, you can you can do current date or whatever you want it to do. And as you can see, numbers will change and truck ratio um, obviously will change, 4.6, right? Today, 176 loads at this point, right? It's going out of it. And then there's a trucks going out of Atlanta, Georgia, like 38. Very, very important. So, guys, I'll come back and let me see if I can pick some of the questions you have. Let's see. Um, I'll take I'll take this. And, and I remember Ahmed has the question about the carrier acquisition. But since we are, um, let me. Let me take this, you know, go back and Ahmed, I know that you have this question. Remember, we talked about this. I'll come back to talk about how you can acquire, you know, clients. I'll, you know, come back to this. But then let's um, take this um, question. Would I look for loads for hazmat or oversized loads on DAT? Yes, you can. You can do that. Uh, remember, we had, let me come back. Let me just take your question and then let's go back. Remember, we uh, were searching for, an, you know, you know, equipment type. So think about um, there you go. So if you if you can put this and those loads will pop up, and obviously other equipment you can put. Um, then then we also have uh, you can put also this K and D 
uh, specialized decks and standard deck, then, then you will obviously see. But you will see oversized loads. Remember, I put it this. If you can remove this, then obviously loads will you know pop up, uh, meaning the oversized loads. And also, you can see, see, is this load was canceled? And I think this load was posted for about 14 hours. I think it was the exactly the same load. So this load was canceled. Okay. Now, let me come back and see. Um, so we have another. There you go. So I think it's clear now. Yes, you can see these hazmat loads and oversized loads. So, But then be careful if, like, if you... Well, it all depends on your like carrier. So if you're an independent freight dispatcher, but if you're a carrier, obviously you know um, your your equipment. Obviously you can do that. And then for box trucks, I remember I mentioned that if you guys have in like box truck carriers, or if you're a carrier in a box truck, I can also show you how you can search loads for you know box truck. Um, you're welcome. Obviously, obviously, you're welcome. Um, let me talk about this. Ahmed has this question, which is very, very common question, um, acquiring new clients. This is, uh, I'm assuming you're an independent freight dispatcher and you're looking for carriers. Clients meaning carriers, owner operators. And for those of you who don't know owner operators, owner operator is a person who owns a truck and trailer um, and, and, and basically drives it. The carrier has more than one truck four truck five trucks like for example i was a carrier back in the days uh, my company called uh, prime express i had four trucks and i served a flatbed market and this is one of the reasons why i said that um, i specialize in uh, flatbed market and i know ins and outs of the flatbed market so acquiring a customer there are two ways to acquire a customer but before we get there i want you to like for those of you um, let me pull myself so that you guys can see me. Um, for those of you who are outside the United States, you need to th think twice when you're building your dispatching business. If you are building a dispatching business, think about accessing the load board. So there are alternatives. That I'll mention you know um, those load boards. So if you are not able to access the DAT, whatever the reasons, but then there are a lot of load boards out there that you can dispatch, right? A lot of load boards. So if you if you wanted to like get the list of, I have the list of loads. So you can email me. I'll put um, somewhere over here. Let me go here. There you go. So if you can email me here, um, info at dispatchtrucks.com, and then I will email you back with the list of load boards. If you're outside the United States, you can use those companies. Most of them have worked in the past, and then I see that I got that list from... Uh, my students who are using, they're you know outside the United States and they're using other load boards. And obviously, people you know somehow accessing the DAT, I, I don't recommend doing that, like using VPNs or stuff like that. If it works for you, like it's it's like it's your job. But but again, I'm here representing the DAT. It's just like guys, it's it, if they said that hey, you don't have an access, you don't have an access. But you can use other load boards. But somehow, as I said have access i have no problem with it now that's one thing if you're overseas be careful because you will build your business and then in one day now access denied to a load board now what happened then then that's it your business is gone right so if you're in the united states you have no problem you will have the access to a load board. And again, you guys, if you wanted to get this load board, you can call the DAT, mention my name, which is Kamal, or the company name, Dispatch Trucks. And then they will give you the discounts and you can get up and running with this. Now, if you wanted to get training, I will put the link below. You can have the free guide. And then on the next page, uh, when you download the free guide, you will see that I have a training, like hands-on training. You can, you know, Sign up for the training, and I'll, I'll teach you how to become independent freight dispatchers. And obviously, we go inside, like ins and outs, like what we talked about here. And, and this is the heart of of this um, the system, like independent freight dispatching system or being a carrier. Like this is everything. If you know load board, ins and outs of it, specifically DAT, DAT one more specifically. If you specialize using this load board, man, you, you'll make a lot of money with this. And again, at the end, we will talk about the current situation, meaning in trucking. What will happen with the trucking? Is it going to like improve or it's like it's just done and it's not going to 
get better or something like anytime soon or something like that. Uh, we'll talk about this. And I'll just share my personal opinion and what I see based on my experience. But if you see something different, obviously, you can um, share your thoughts with me. Uh, I'll be more than uh, happy to read those comments and obviously engage with you and, uh, you know, uh, generate some ideas, right? So that's very important. Think about now when you have a carrier or if you are a carrier, let, well, this is specifically for freight dispatcher. Let me specifically focus on independent freight dispatcher. So, Ahmed, you are an independent freight dispatcher. You are an outside the United States. As I mentioned, if you're outside the United States, be careful with accessing the DAT uh, because it's prohibited. It, it's, it's no access to overseas. That's that's basically a decision by, made decision by the DAT Solutions, which is a company. And I'm just here to just say that. Okay. Clear? Awesome. What are the alternatives? I'll send you an alternative. You can email me here in front of dispatch trucks. I will send you the list of uh, companies that you can work with. Now, second important thing is that you need to focus on the market, meaning who do you serve? This is very important. I remember, you know, learning sales and, and, and marketing and, and business strategies. This specifically for marketing and advertising. This was a specific question, and you never ever, you know, just forget about this or just put aside or something like that. This is very important that you must understand that who do you serve? Your customers, who they are. If you are, let's say, leaning towards flatbed market, I am your customer, right? Why? Because I had I had, I'm just giving an example, I had four trucks. And I was serving um, flatbed market. So I was planning to get buy more trucks, but then COVID hit. A lot of things changed. But let's say if I'm in a business right now, I would work with you. I'll be interested in working with you. And then if you're like, hey, Kamal, I specialize in the flatbed market, and I will be interested in working with you. That's very important, and there's a reason why. That's number one. The second is... Maybe you will be serving van, right? Van market. Or maybe you will be serving refrigerant market, right? Refair market. Or car hauling market. This is very, very important. Just pick a niche. This is what I called. It depends on how you pronounce it. It depends on where you're located. Meaning niche or niche. Meaning more specific. Who do you serve, right? I'll give an example. If you serve a flatbed market, meaning you will be dispatching loads for flatbed trailer specific requirements specific dimensions remember this very important now based on that if you ask why is important to pick a niche is because this is everything ties down or boils down to one thing and one thing only niche market when you advertising you will have two ways to advertise what are those one way to advertise is organic outreach. We'll talk about this. And then there's a paid outreach. Organic outreach, this is where you on the internet, by yourself, with your team, it doesn't matter. You're just going and asking questions, participating, creating content like I do, right? It's saying, hey, I'm here and I, I do X, Y, and Z meaning I dispatch loads for flatbed, or this is how I book loads, anything, and then carriers will, will find you. One way of doing that, organic outreach. Second way of doing organic outreach is just participating in Facebook group. This is an old way of doing it, but it's powerful, it works. But if you know the tactics, if you know um, the script, how to talk to them, how to attract them, this is very important. There are hundreds of thousands of carriers online right now. And, and we have a Facebook group, and I have thousands of carriers out there. And if you want me to share, um, this is the Facebook group. You can go there. You can type. You can see my logo. This is the logo on the top right. And then just go there and join the Facebook group. I have thousands of carriers out there looking for help. You can just go there and deliver the value. And if they're interested in working with you, you can obviously work with the carriers that we have. Right, so we have a currently, I think, about twelve thousand people in that group. You can more than welcome to uh, join that group. That's the second way. Now, meaning second way, meaning 
the organic outreach. But remember why I said organic outreach and I also mentioned the paid market. Let me close this in, um, let me just pull comments and move this. I do see comments coming in. Okay, cool, keep them coming. Now, second way is basically advertising and again, leveraging the Facebook, um, and again, YouTube, le leveraging TikTok, leveraging, by the way, TikTok now is killing. A lot of my students right now are creating content. I'll give you an example. One of my students creating content, um, she's basically just showing the load board and she's talking about how she's looking for loads for specific market, meaning flatbed. And, and she says that she's getting a lot of customers by just like one video that she posted. It's like, hey, can you dispatch? Hey, I have this many you know, loads. And obviously I taught her how to attract, how to talk to them and how to onboard them and how to serve them and how to keep them in game. Yeah, that's another thing. But if you wanted to learn those and obviously you can join the training, I'll put the link you know, below this video. So that's advertising, leveraging these social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, you know, YouTube and, and Facebook, more specifically Facebook, um, advertising to get carriers because a lot of carriers using um, Facebook, like Facebook groups, whatnot, and then you will get a lot of carriers. That's how you do it. But then I think the important aspect of this, are you ready to serve those people? When I ask this to my students, most of the time, you know, they get confused. Like, man, we need, we need carriers. We wanted to make money. But I understand that. Like I have, imagine I have four trucks and I'm ready right now to work with you. Like how you're going to onboard me? Like, like, do you have the system ready to rock and roll? Do you have the dispatching, let's say software? Like, how am I going to get loads? How am I going to communicate with you? I talk to hundreds of carriers and they will ask specific questions when you get just like, wow, like what should I do? Right? This is very, very important. Like you need to set up the house ready to take them in and serve them. Why? Because finding carriers, you can find them just like that and you can lose them just like that. Right? Finding carriers is easy. By the way, I did a video on YouTube, how to find a carrier within the five minutes. Well, I have this tool. I think I will make another video. We'll talk about how to find carriers, like just within five minutes. You can find them within five minutes. But the question is, you, you, you need to attract them, right? You need to talk to them. You need to, you know, get yes from them. And once you do that, how are you going to serve them? How? Like, will you start on Monday? What if it's just Wednesday? Will he wait until Monday? Like, will you say, I will start immediately? If so, how? What am I like? Will you send carrier dispatcher agreement? Like, what are you sending me? Like, what are the paperwork process? If you don't have this process, carrier will get this sense of insecurity. And like, I don't think it's the right fit for me. And then he will move on. A lot of my students, when they first started, said, come on, I did this and this and this. Carrier, like I was excited. I would talk to Carrier. And Carrier said yes. But then right next day, he disappeared. Like, <laughs> raise your hand or let me know in the comments that, you know, happened to you. Because it's common. Why? Because there's no proper onboarding process. You find a Carrier. He said hello. You said hello. And he sees that you're not ready. And he leaves. Very important. Now, once you have that, assuming you have everything, you have that. But what about keeping them in the game technique or strategy? How you're going to keep them in the game, like staying with you? Like you, you will have good days when you will dispatch a lot of loads, but then you will have those days that's cold days that when Kedir will just yell at you and will say, man, I didn't sign up for this. You're getting me loads for 1.6, 1.5 rate per mile. You told me it's like $3 per mile, $4 per mile, $2.50 per mile or something like that, right? So this is how you find, obviously, you need to have 
proper up and running website. The website is everything right now. We talked also about funnels in this channel. Um, please consider subscribing and just just browse these um, the videos that I have. I have this video that I think is about like 40 minutes talks about how you can get carriers. I want you to say that I, I really want to say this. I want to share this with you. Guys, finding specifically for independent faith dispatchers, finding carriers. Why it's easy for me to say this for three reasons. One, I was a carrier. Second, I dispatched for many, many years and I taught thousands of people. And I know this. I'm speaking like I'm a carrier. I was a carrier and I know what I need to hear when dispatchers, what I need to look for, you know, in dispatchers, what to say, what not to say. There are a couple of words that will scare dispatch, I mean, carriers, and they will just like, no, it just, it will be cold and no, it will be rejection. It's just like, no, I don't want to work with you. There are like three to four words that carriers don't want to hear from dispatchers. How to negotiate. This is another thing. How to negotiate with carriers. Will you be asking per week rate? Will you be asking per month rate? Per load rate? Like, what, what are your rates and how you're cal calculating? I remember first carrier when I said, I want to serve you. He said, how much do you charge? And I said, 10%. And I said, I'm cool with that. As long as you explain me to me, how did you come up with that number? I remember that day. It was like cold sweat. And I just said 10% because I heard people charging 8, 7, 10%. But if you don't know the reason, even if you're charging 5%, if the carrier, most of them, they will ask this question and they will say, what's the reason behind this? Like, how do you calculate this? But why 5%? Why 10%? Why 7%? How would you say? Like how you handle this objection? Very important, right? So, and that is that. I think I will do more training on going into these um, the specific like market conditions, like building a lane. But again, once I post this video, please type on, on the comment section, what do you want to see? What videos should I make? If I make these types of videos, do you want to see the load board training in depth, even more in depth training? Do you want to see market conditions? Like, tell me, like, you tell me, I will create. I told you guys that I will share my opinion on the current situation uh, with the trucking, uh, like, what is going, like, what will happen. This is, this is based on my experience being in a long time in the trucking industry both working for somebody, then starting my own dispatching company, then becoming a carrier, a little bit of a touching broker here and there. What I see, obviously, and again, I might be wrong because this is this is my personal opinion. There are a lot of experts out there. You can listen to them as well. But I believe that trucking for another maybe one or two years will be bloody. That's what I think. 24, 25 will be bloody. Then a lot of people, um, a lot of carriers will survive. A lot of carriers will go out of the business. It makes sense. And I think it's a logically makes sense because when you see right now, a lot of people going, you know, bankrupt, they're filing bankruptcies, going left and right. To me, I think average carrier in the United States has about five to six trucks, let's say, right? It's it's about right uh, percentage is about six trucks, or let's let's call it seven trucks. Majority of these companies will be survived. I think the big companies, like hundreds of thousands of you know, or tens of thousands of um, the equipments, meaning the trucks, they I don't think they will survive because it's very very bloody. It will just it, it has a tremendous impact on their businesses. But I think this. 70, 80% of majority of the United States, based on the United States, this six to seven truck carriers, majority of those carriers also will, you know, I don't know, will struggle and struggle because, not because of they don't, they don't, they can't find loads. Um, they don't have, you know, you know, brokers to work, whatever. But I think it's an optimization. 
they don't know those carriers do not know how to optimize their um you, you know their tracking company they make a lot of money but then they spend a lot of money they think by increasing the number of trucks will make them a lot of money right so to me it's it's just basically what i really want to say is that 24 and 25 the next year will be bloody for for majority of companies out there dispatchers can survive what i see dispatchers this is for carriers brokers already have a lot of challenges we don't know what will happen and you can go ahead and read the articles um, in the new rules that posted by FMCSA, but by DOT, whatever, just go and read for the brokers. But I'm specifically talking about carriers and um, and the dispatchers. So for dispatchers, there's a lot of opportunities still out there. There are a lot of carriers right now. A lot of carriers right now. You heard the chat GPT. You heard the AI is a buzzword right now. It's it's very popular term right now. It's a hot topic. A lot of companies right now implementing the AI, implementing their technology, let's say, right? If you're not implementing the AI into your business, then you will fall behind and you'll lose. It's it's very simple. Well, well, give me an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. Think about one of my students emailed me about like a month ago. And she said, Kamal, well, two or three three carriers. And carriers struggling, and she also struggling because of the load board. And obviously, there's some you know tips and tax against you know optimization process. That's another thing. But then I said, listen, what do you offer to your carriers currently? Well, I'm in the flatbed market. The only thing I'm offering is, um, let me let me do this. What am I offering right now? Is it's just like finding loads, like booking loads, searching load. I mean, searching loads. You know, you know, booking loads and dispatching loads. That's what I do. But I said, listen, why don't you offer another services to your carriers? Because you already sold your service to these carriers. And it's like, what are those? Like, why don't you like learn the AI, how to implement AI, how to do social uh, marketing for them, uh, build a website for them? Like, I don't know. Like, why don't you find the, the company who does this is just like have their services and and sell those services to your carriers. Like you, you, like I don't know many, many things. If I offer you a web um, website building services, let's say if you're one of my carriers and I'm a dispatcher, and you say, come on, as you can see, market condition is bad, but I really wanted to market my services. I want to get sh- direct shippers, you know, X, Y, and Z. I need marketing help. I need social media management help. Can you do that, for example? Well, think about, I can say yes. If I don't know how to plug in this chat GPT or AI into his business, I will get the company who does this and I will just sell that services to him. When I'm helping my carriers so that they can stay in the business. Why? If they stay in the business and I'm making money. Very, very important. So if you guys have questions, please let me know. Um, Kelvin says, hi from um, Houston, Texas. Love Houston, Texas. Awesome. Um, guys, we'll be doing more of these. Well, thank you so much for watching and we'll come back on like tomorrow on Thursday. Actually, we'll be doing, uh, 5 P no, let's say 12 PM Eastern time. We'll do another live training. Okay. So, and then on Tuesdays, we'll be doing, um, from 12 PM to, from 12 to 1 PM. These are the like coaching slash, um, live training and I'll be, Obviously, teaching independent freight dispatching. And if you are interested in becoming a carrier, I will be doing that as well. Um, Best Boy KZ says, thanks, Kamal. Obviously, you're welcome. Please make sure to subscribe. I, it's just like blows my mind when I you know, log into my analytics and I see that like 79%, like 80% of people watching this content, they didn't subscribe. They watch and they leave. But And also, we have a from Tajikistan. Hello to Tajikistan as well. Um, you guys have been awesome. And again, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12 p.m. Eastern time, Atlanta time or New York time. Let, let's say that. Tune in and we'll be doing amazing uh, training. Please consider subscribing. Also, I will put the link below this video if you want to uh, enroll into classes. I do have amazing classes. I have a lot of students. Please join. Talk soon. Bye.